It's the Premium Pete Show. Internets, welcome back to another episode of the Premium Pete Show. Sitting here, okay, with a great, great guest. But before I get into it, okay, it's something that what I've been loving is throughout the years of podcasts and been able to uh, make people laugh, uh, make people learn, uh, you know, give people ideas, and at the same time, maybe get them through a bad week, a bad day, or just their work shift. Shouts to all my truck drivers out there listening to the show. Shouts to everybody out there on the train, wherever the fuck you are. But more importantly, doing things that I've been through, having episodes that really relate to me. I never done an episode where I just had to do an episode. I never did. There's no such thing as a filler for me. So anyway, I want to introduce this next gentleman, uh, founder of Premier. Premier Paralegal. Listen, the one and only Sandler Francois is in the building. Okay. What's going on, Pete? What's so, going on? Listen, are you French? My family's from Haiti. Okay. Sac passe. Uh, rest in peace to uh, our brother, uh, Combat Jack. True uh, indeed. Reggio Se. Uh, love always. Uh, you know why I'm so happy to have you on? Is because I've been divorced. Mm. Um, very... To be honest with you, very uh, not aware of anything gotcha. that was going on. Right. Um, not informed, uh, not smart enough for a uh, divorce. Um, basically out there all willy-nilly, so to speak. And what I mean by that is uh, I didn't prepare for divorce. And, and who does? Who does, right. Does, right. Do, 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 people, do people even prepare for, say, uh, dying? People don't want to write wills, you right. know? Um you, you know, there's so many things I want to say, and uh, I'll start off at this. Um, for a while, when I started seeing people get divorced more and more, I would tell people, you know what job you should want? You should want to become a divorce lawyer because the divorce rate is so fucking high. You know, as of today, what is the divorce rate? As of 2016, because, you know, when the Department of Health does this research, uh, they tend to scale back a year or two because they're in the process of compiling current research. But it's 55 percent mm-hmm. as of 2016. But you also said that there's more the, – the marriage rate – Has is... increased, mm-hmm. has increased exponentially. And really? the reason why is because of the laws that passed, you know, thank God for laws, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the laws that passed have allowed civil, uh, you know, same-sex marriages mm-hmm. to take place. So with that being said, you know, the marriage rate – has increased exponentially. You know, I would say approaching 70 to 72 percent. Wow. Now, let me ask you, do you think it, you know, and and, and look, you know, I believe in love. I right. believe in partnership. Right. Um, I'm I, married. I, yeah, really? How long? Uh, 22 years. God damn. I've been with the same woman 28 years. Shout what? out to my queen, Itaya. Man, listen, shouts to her. We're going to get into uh, your marriage because I maybe you have the secret sauce of how, how to stay, you know, how, how it lasts so long. I, I will say this, though. Um... Does it does does it even mean something? And I don't mean to a person, to, but to get married anymore, because of how people get divorced so easily now. I used to make a joke and say, like, look, somebody sneezes wrong. I'm like, oh shit, you sneeze like that? I'm out of here. <laughs> well, you know what? I'll say this. At the end of the day, I think you you touched on it earlier, where you said people don't even prepare for certain things. I think a lot of people don't prepare to get married. Mm-hmm. You know, I think people, as we've heard, people fall in lust, not love, mm-hmm. or they have a very different idea it. of what love is, right? You know, I learned a long time ago that love is far from an emotional thing. Love is a commitment. It's a commitment to nurture. It's a commitment to provide. And it's a commitment to uh, uh, stay attached, you know. you know. So thus, those outcomes result in feelings of joy, happiness, and continued commitment, right? So... Other than love, what we're taught, you know, especially our little girls, right? Sure. They, they're, they're taught that you and I have little girls that we precious. I That's have right. two, That's and correct. I understand you have one, That's you know, correct. that we both we both uh, cherish. What boils down to is this. You know, society's given us a very skewed perspective because of reality TV, because of music, because of entertainment, and because I would say a lot of lack of... You know, let's be honest, a lot of lack of parental guidance Mm. in some cases Mm. to show that love is hard. Love hurts. Love is dirty. You know, love is the hardest job you'll ever have, especially if you're engaged in marriage. Mm. And Mm. because people don't make that connection, they're quick to check us out or they go to see a contested divorce lawyer. And, you know, and they're willing to spend all that money, you know, simply because they didn't invest the time in life. You're going to spend either time or money. 
is what I like to say. You're going to spend time to save money, or you're going to save. Are you going to spend money to save time? God, damn, I mean, listen, you're already dropping Twitter quotes over here. What the fuck is <laughs> going on, Sam? Let me ask some. Over the years, uh, what would you say has been like your biggest challenge? Well, I'll say this first. You know, first when it comes to what we do at Premier Paralegal is when someone comes into us, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I've been involved in over 1,000 divorces, Mm -hmm. even assisting other, you know, attorneys in other offices in guidance about how to get their divorces done properly, right? So uh, from a business angle and also from uh, the theatrical angle where things get sticky, you know, they call our office and say, how do we resolve this? Because the paperwork isn't being signed because one person's angry at the other. But to answer your question, what it boils down to is this. The biggest challenges that I've seen are people that are not on the same page and they'd rather fight and put themselves in front of the black robe, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. the judge. Sure, sure. You know, whereas it's OK if two people are angry at each other or bitter, but they don't keep in mind that a lot of times there are kids involved. Mm. You know what? Let's start uh, going over your amazing journey. And that would be is let's start off with this. Uh, I guess we'll start off and we'll try to make it, uh, you know. We'll start off. What has been one of the most heartbreaking cases you ever uh, had to witness and see? Heartbreaking. I have seen parents come in together, you know, and while you can still see the love between a husband and wife, they realize that for some reason they just don't want to continue, mm-hmm. you know, where emotionally and for all the reasons that I can see that they should, there are certain internal strifes within themselves as individuals. You know, that they don't want to let go and sacrifice certain things about themselves. I've seen alcoholism. I've seen drug addiction. I've seen porn addiction, Mm. you know, break up really, really great marriages. And when I speak to— I thought that—not to cut you up, but to be honest with you, I think that's the only way you could uh, make it through a marriage is having a little bit of Uh, watching porn. Porn on the side, right? No, 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 only because—let's be honest. um, You know, sometimes— I don't know, depending on what type of porn you're talking about, but, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I think that sometimes, um, you know, imagination, you know, I, I don't know, a porn is, to me, it's a, mo- it's a harmless thing, you know, you know, where, well, I, I don't know, I'm just, well, I guess the, I'm speaking for myself. The, and, you know, you're speaking for a lot of people, you know, at certain times in my life, perhaps you're speaking for me too, right? No, but I'm sure we'll agree, too much of anything. Yeah, shouldn't abuse anything. There you go. There you go. So with that being said, I've seen really nightmare uh, divorces come out, you know, where people just cannot get out of their own way and make certain sacrifices within themselves for the sake of the relationship. That tends to be people think it's money, you know, the reason why a lot of people break up. People think it's dishonesty, which I think is just a branch of one important thing. It's just a lack of communication. Yeah. Truly. Man, you couldn't. You said it. communication is so key. I mean, you know what I'm learning as I get older. And I keep on saying this. What's that? The most cliche things, they're corny, because they're cliche because they use so much. Yeah. But they're so fucking true. There you go. Communication is everything. Hmm. You know, um, being able to be on somewhat of the same page, being able. You know, it, it's funny. I remember someone telling me. You know, I got divorced when my daughter was two, and I remember someone telling me. Because I'm a very helpful guy to people I care about. Right. And they're like, you can't, well, why would I take advice from you? You've been divorced. And I'm like, that's why you should take advice from me because I'm going to tell you what the fuck went wrong and what hmm. went right. Hmm. But more importantly, what I did learn is you should pick and choose your battles. Right. As a married man in a marriage, you should pick and choose your battles. More importantly, um, I think that what happens is people get married, and you tell me, you know, because you're seeing the after effects of it. People get married, um, you know, sex is good before, you know, everything's great. And then when you become a family or have kids and things change, you know what I'm saying? Um, You know, sometimes things slow up, the good things, sometimes the bad things speed up. Right. Um, But I believe that as you get like as you get older, you learn that you want yourself a partner. Mm -hmm. You want yourself somebody that will hold you down if you ever lost your job, you, you know, and I don't only really mean financially, uh, you know, just being there for you. And I think in this day and age, sometimes people, when you meet the person you're hanging out with, think about it. All you're worried about is kind of really having sex in the beginning. Right. You're like, oh, you know, you know, to make it to that moment, like, oh, okay, so this is going down, this is happening. And, you know, things change, you know, when when you have become a family or years, things come out, everything seems good in the beginning. It does. It does. Well, you know, you know what I'll say about that? 
as having, like I said, I've been married since uh, I was, I, I got married at 20. All right. I've been with my wife since I was 14. Mm-hmm. All right. So people say, how in the world do you do that? You know, uh, sometimes people see my wife and I walking down. We live in Bed-Stuy in Brooklyn. People see us in downtown and in the area holding hands. And they say, you guys still hold hands. You sure you've been married so long? I say, you know what? It's a decision. Is she uh, is she also a Haitian? No, my wife is. Uh, her father's from Trinidad. Her mother's from the south. Oh, okay, that's why you, she she would have whooped that ass. <laughs> yeah, she would have whooped that ass if you try to leave her. You know, wasn't happy. I'll bust that windows at that car. <laughs> Yo, Max, him. Let's go into more uh, cases. What's the craziest case you ever dealt with? I ha- I can tell you one that comes to mind, and it comes to mind at least once or twice a year <laughs> when we're taking the stroll down memory lane in the office. So you remember this one? You remember this one? This was very early on uh, when I first started out. I had a couple come in, simple mm-hmm. uncontested divorce. And just to explain to you, I'm so happy. If I'm going to be engaged in the divorce process, the ones that I like to be involved in is the ones where it's just paperwork, black mm-hmm. letters on white Meaning paper. where, so people who may not know, meaning where people come in and say, look, we don't want to fight any type of crazy things. Right. We want to get divorced. Right. It's just procedure. It's okay. just a matter of procedure. Okay. There's no there's no theatrics. It's just uh, one person comes in. Sometimes they both come in, and you can just tell it's just cool. You know, the anger's yeah. Just passing, sign the papers and, and then go. move on. Just yeah. move on. So this one came in seemingly under those circumstances, right? So the wife would always come in. There are three typically three appointments you got to come in. First interview. Next you sign. Next they sign. Right, and then it goes to the court. You wait a couple of weeks. It's done. The, the uh, second appointment comes in. The wife comes. She's angry. And the husband waits in the car. Mm. And I said, miss, the next time you come, you know, your husband has to come in with you. She said, oh, he'll be here all right. He'll be here. He's in the car, but next time I'll bring him. So the third time comes in a couple weeks later, and he walks in, but he walks in feet behind her. Nothing new. You know, people don't want to walk in together. It's a tense that you're coming to see me. You're not coming and holding hands. You know, but there's... An awkward distance behind sure. uh, one behind the other. The husband, while I'm sitting at my desk, she's facing me. He's motioning down with his eyes at her. And I said, okay, he's standing behind her, motioning down her eyes. Lo and behold, this woman had a knife mm. in her hand. Holy shit. And I don't know if she was out to cut me or cut him, but after I said, excuse me, can you have a seat? And she refused and she put her hand to her side. It resulted in me calling the cops. She ends up standing outside and telling the cops that she pulled the knife from me. Mm. And the cops looked at her as if, why would he pull a knife on you? And it turned out the lady was uh, bipolar. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So the husband was in denial all this time because similar to me, he had been with her since they were teens. And she had always expressed these kind of emotions. Mm. And for some people, it becomes a norm. And this was in a time where mental illness, which is very important to address, wasn't as important. We're talking about eight years ago mm. you know just think the difference a couple years ago sure sure you know so that was a nightmare and i'll tell you a twist behind that they got remarried really get the fuck they out of here remarried. you know they what they remarried. say about insanity right yeah yeah doing yeah. the same thing over, over and, and over again, again. yeah and expecting different results they're facebook friends you can't make this shit up <laughs> but um, it happens. It you happens. know what's one of your you, you know i don't know if you say proudest um, is there like uh, I know you, I know we spoke about happy. Sure. We spoke about crazy. Sure. Um, you know, let's actually get to the side of and 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 one thing I really hope to with this episode is we give people info to right. know right. that if they ever do happen to get divorced, at least you're in tune to understand what to do. Mm-hmm. Even like with prenups, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, don't really know what a prenup is or. You know, is it weird to get married and have a guy say, look, we want to do a prenup? Does that hurt your relationship to say that? Because it's kind of like, I don't trust you. Excellent question. I'll say a lot of that if I'm going to be straight to the point. I would say it depends on the family background, the culture, right? I've had some clients who come from high net worth families, Mm -hmm. right? And that family's culture is used to protecting the front line. You know, maybe dad... Uh, is a high six-figure or even seven-figure individual and the son is going to inherit or the daughter is going to inherit. That parent wants to make sure that they're protecting the inheritance from being absorbed because procedurally speaking, what can occur is without that prenup, 
if something were to happen to dad or mom and you inherit, you know, a significant amount of money, assets, funds, whatever the case may be, the other spouse, let's say, decides things go wrong or they want a divorce. I think, you know, we have an NBA player, Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Who's going through this? I just read about it in the paper the other day. What happens after, without that frontline protection, you can have rights and entitlements to that because you didn't have a prenup, mm. because you didn't have that early document in place to put those protections. Besides getting a prenup, sure. um, what can people with money, you know, uh, you know, get from you that can help them? Is there anything else? Well, outside of money, uh, assets, you know, access. This is something really critical. Forget about the rich. Let's just talk about your normal John and Jane Doe. Let's say you work for the MTA. Sure. You know, and you have a night. The MTA workers tend to have a great pension plan, Mm -hmm. you know, and you worked years and years and years and you've amassed a pretty decent pension where you can actually retire and not get a second job, right? Because we know we live in the day and age where people retire and they still have to go get a gig. Sure. You know, uh, without a prenup, you can go ahead and have your pension absorbed by your spouse, you know, because once you get divorced, there's a process called uh, quadro. Q-D-R-O, a qualified domestic relations order. And once the divorce is done, the judge signs off and says, based on what your pension agreement initially said, because your pension irons out what a spouse can get in the, in the case of a divorce. Some say if you were married for 10 years, you're going to get 10 years of this pension. Some say it's going to be a certain uh, figure, you know, and the quadro is what automatically, without you having any say, if you're the person who has to give it up, having to give up the funds from your pension, mm-hmm. you know. So that's one thing that can happen. And that's more often than you think mm-hmm. when it boils down to it. You know, does uh, does being, uh, you know, involved in, in all these, you know, divorce law, you know, child, we'll get into child support, sure. we'll get into prenup more. Sure. Um, is, does anything ever haunt you, man? You know what? I get that asked that a lot because I, without hesitation, I tell people I love what I do. Yeah. You know, I really love what I do. Uh, I can say it from an entrepreneurial aspect, I love the independence. You know, I love the journey. I remember when I was just putting up flyers, you know, in the corner of Nostrum sure, and sure, Fulton sure. Street. You awesome. know, Yeah, yeah. You know, and seeing how it's evolved. I'm celebrating 10 years this year. Congratulations. Right? I'm grateful. Thank you. Uh, you know, so I tell people I love what I do, right? So I have to explain a lot of times when I speak. And that's why I tend to be viewed as more as a positive person, not quite a life coach, but for lack of a better term, right? Because you see, I like to talk about these things, sure, sure. the life aspect, the real life aspect. And when it boils down to it, uh, what I enjoy the most is the fact that divorce not only is the separation of you and one person, but it can perhaps be leading you to meet the person that you were truly meant to be with. You know, it's it's funny. I think I have this. I don't know. How, I'm sure there's other people, obviously, that have this problem. But uh, a lot of times, law isn't fair. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we 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 see that. You know. Right. Um. You know, maybe we have a misunderstanding. You know, like what what is law? You know. Law is a set of rules and a set of rules that were designed, you know, typically before you and I were born or if they were designed during our lifetime, they were designed by people who had more influence than we have. Right. Can it ever evolve, though? Because, you know, I think the system, you know, and I don't know the divorce uh, system um, so well. Um, I've been divorced uh, many years ago, but. You know, you know, it's almost like a lot of these, you know, uh, the criminal laws and, you know, they don't evolve as much. I mean, you know, how does how does these things evolve to be uh, better or I mean, would you say like the divorce, you know, the court divorce court is just set up for failure for, you know, these couples? Is it is by and large? That, yeah. By and large, in my opinion, I would say yes, because typically speaking, what is fair? Right. Who in in a great scheme of things, what is fair? Uh, I I do think with respect to our justice system, you know, when it comes specifically to divorce, um, it's a battle. It's a competition. Someone's going to win. Someone's going to lose. And now we're going back to talking about certain societal standards, whereas um, I have seen in many instances a mother may not be as fit as one would think she should be to be able to have custodial rights to the kids. But what happens? The court still gives for the kids. You know, it's um, it's funny you said that because I remember uh, maybe it's just New York. But I remember hearing somebody say, like, a woman would have to come in to the court strapped with kilos, like, on, 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 you know, on her (laughs) in order to be considered an unfit mother. And just considered. Not deemed. Mm. 
you know, just considered, not deemed. Why is it? Why is it that hard? And don't get me wrong. Let me tell you something. Okay, there's a lot of deadbeat dads out there. Sure, sure. And even though me sure. and you are good dads, sure, we Thank you. need to work uh, to help uh, rebuild that word, dad. Right. Uh, even though we're okay, we we do good. Doesn't matter, right? As overall, there's a lot of people who leave their kids. You know, um, they're fresh. Their kids' are, clothes are dirty. They're not worried about. It. They don't have. An, it, it it's tough. I can never sleep at night without. You know, a lot of these kids, man, it's it's tough. It's 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 interesting. You're well. You know, it's sad to say you and I'll dare put myself in your basket. We're cut from a different cloth. Sure. You know, um, there have always been an issue with uh deadbeat dads or absentee uh dads you know there's all, but it seems like it's increased you know to some extent but at the same time i think responsible dads and dads who are out there really struggling pushing to do the right thing don't get their due you know somehow it's it's always easier to walk down the stairs of negativity than it is to walk up the stairs of progress sure, it's not sure, sexy sure, sure, it's just sure. not sexy anymore sure so know? so so why why do you think that uh finding a mother unfit is very hard to do, especially if sometimes maybe she is. I think it boils down to nature, right? You know, you tend to see what mom gives birth to the child, right? Yeah. The child has a, a natural affinity attachment towards mom. Mom takes care of the baby. And then as time goes on, what happens? Uh, the motherhood is something that's prized and cherished. I mean, look at it like this. You and I both agree to this. Um, who wins? Mothers on Mother's Day? Or 30 days later, or three weeks later, Father's on Father's Day. Right? I mean, Mother's, yeah, no, I get it. You I know, mean. And that's not to devalue. I, I come from a great mom, I'm sure you sure, do. Yes, sir, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and we're grateful for them. I, I am. I mean, th- to be honest with you, um, how, you know, it's amazing, though, um, how important moms are, um, how quick, uh, even, even, you know, watching, you know, people snap into becoming mothers. Mothers become mothers so so easily like right. you know meaning like they they get it right and and and, and they're warm and, and they care about you and and you know and and then again we got have some mothers that are not you know uh fit to be mothers and then there's fathers that are not fit true but true. unfortunately i feel like uh you know i do want to take uh you know responsibility to know that uh, there's a lot of guys that left a lot of mothers with true. kids Exactly. And whether they're married or not. So yeah. that that's what that's what child support comes into play. Right. Something great. Great segue. Great segue. You know, but it's true. Child support, like anything. What did we say earlier? You know, yeah. about porn. Right. Too much of anything is abuse. What is child support meant for? Child support is specifically meant for the benefit and the welfare of the child and their upbringing. And theoretically speaking, it's income that would be introduced into the relationship, perhaps if the mother and father were together. So give an example. Somebody uh, is married right now. Um, they have, what, one kid? Let's give an example. Let's give an example. Two kids. How much is one 17%. kid? 17%. Okay. Seventeen percent of the non-custodial parents' income. There's a there's a huge and complicated, in my opinion, uh, formula that the state uh, requires that you use if and when you and your spouse, or you and the child's mother, cannot agree, or in other words, deviate. So let's uh, let's work off of a hundred dollars, right? Seventeen percent of that's what seventeen bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you two can't get it together, then seventeen bucks is going to come out of this. All right, but let's say we know if you let the courts decide. If you let the saying. courts decide, correct? Which, 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 and and not to cut you off, which sometimes, okay, is good for either or uh, uh, who's involved, meaning the 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 father or the mother. And I'll explain to you why. Go ahead. Um, sometimes it's better for the mother because the fucking guy is, uh, not responsible enough. Fair. Um, also the guy is, uh, he sees her go out on a date and he's like, fuck it. He delays the payment to her. Happens, happens. Um, he's mad. Happens. You know, uh, you know, uh, and then let's flip it to the other side. Thank you. Let's flip it to the other side. Go ahead. Can I throw the other side yeah, out ahead. there? Yeah, you do the other okay, side. so now mom, you know, I'll say great mom. Yeah. Great mom. Yeah. Kiss the kids, dress them up. Yeah. They look great. Yeah. You know, she does She does everything that you would say is the quote-unquote right thing. But she's angry. Yeah. So she'll deny. And dad has been trying to do the best thing possible. He makes his visits, and he gives the mom cash. Mm. Cash. Very bad. Oh, here we go. You see where I'm going with this. So he gives cash. 
She gets angry because maybe he starts a new life. He's with the pretty young got lady. Got a new chicken. You know, or he new got bay. the... He's went on a vacation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or all of a sudden, he's got the job that she swears she's been maybe supporting him while he was, he's been trying to get his act together. Now he ends up they have the greatest job in the world, right? Uh, and he's been paying cash. He knows what the formula is. They both agreed verbally what the deal's going to be. She goes to court, and she does what? She says, he hasn't paid me a dime. He hasn't paid me a dime, dime, dime. And God knows how long. Mm. So Mm-mm-mm. you're guilty until proven innocent, right? Which in family court, you're, you know, my experience shows me you're rarely proven innocent as a dad. Two kids. What's the percentage? Uh, 22. 22. Uh, 22. Uh, 20, uh, 20, 22%. Three is 25. Okay. Going off the top of my head. And then once you go beyond that, it's 35%. And then it's an additional calculation with, with four or five more. Okay, Each addition will be on four or five. I've seen it. I've never been this type of dad, but I've seen it. Uh, meaning like the mother calls and says, uh, hey, uh, say if it's a son, you know, hey, our son needs a new pair of sneakers. Yep. And the father will say, we'll take it out of the child support. I've um, seen that. You know, I never did that only because I wanted to make sure my daughter had what I wanted to give her. Right. I didn't want her to depend on and you know what sometimes i think as a father and and if, if you're listening and, and and this is you uh analyze the situation sometimes if you're saying take the money out of the sneak you know for sneaking and then you go pick your kid up and you see they got dirty kicks on if that's something that you're okay with um then you know you, you do that but for me i always gave the child support and i made sure that i gave more than that like meaning right. like you know, I I bought her her, her her clothes back, summer clothes, and then right. clothes back for school, back to school uh, right. supplies. I I never was like take it out. One thing I did have a problem with in the beginning, but I learned how to just forget about it, because sometimes you give. I used to give child support. Yep. And she'd be like, uh, well, uh, she'd be like, uh, hey, are you going to give me the child support on the fifth? And I was like, yeah. She was like, okay, because I need to pay my rent. Was this an agreement between you two or the, yeah, or the court dictated it, it, Yeah, it was. Be, thank God it was, be, it, it was for us. God you know? bless. Too mature yeah. people. Good, yeah. Good, it, good. Well, it almost didn't go that way, but thank God. Well, that's how it um, Okay. Because I, to be honest with you, as a guy who, who loves his kids so much, and if me and you didn't make it, I didn't want a, a court telling me I had to pay. I'm going to pay any. I'm going to pay. Right. These are my kids. Right. I'm going to take care of You're them. You're a man. Of course. I can never go to sleep at night if that wasn't the case. But you see, again, cut from a different cloth, raised by good men. You come from you come from a stock sure. of men that you know. This is how it is. Sure, but when I'm back to what I was saying is is she was like, I need to pay my rent, and I, and and I was like, wait, you know, my child support is not just for your rent; it's for my daughter. I made that mistake of arguing with her a couple mm-hmm. times about that because she was like, oh, I got to go on, you know, I'm going on vacation. And I was like, yo, my money's not wait, wait. Oh, so I wasn't paying the rent anymore. It's like when I have, let me speak to that. Yeah. You don't mind. Pardon no, me no, no, for sure. It's it's weird because, again, on one hand, these these percentages that are dictated don't really speak to reality, right? There are different seasons that go on, not just different seasons like summer, back to school, closing, but different seasons in life. You know, no relationship is ever 50, 50 no relationship sure, in life sure. is ever 50, so 60, 40, 70, 30, somebody's going to have to hold it the varies, other one up. Yeah. You know, and that child, if the two parents aren't together, married, um, or in a solid relationship, living in the same home, right? If those two uh, parents do not have the child to really connect them where they're together, you know, then what's going to happen is perhaps in a lot of cases you found yourself being the person that has to hold down 70%. Sure. Of the relationship sure. for the child's sake. So is mom guilty of going on vacation and perhaps being, not in your case, I'm just saying in general, uh, maybe financially irresponsible in a certain way where she's going to redirect money to go to Cancun, you know, versus having saved that money for the past six months. You know, you're, you're, this is something that you signed up for in the beginning, you know, um, whenever you have kids, uh, you know. You know, and I, and I learned to um, maybe, you know, she... You know, money gets all over with bills. So right. meaning like, you know, if, if she used child support to pay the cable bill, who, who gives a fuck? That's your money is going to the living standards. The only thing is you don't want, you know, and, and that's something, you know, you don't want your kid. Like I just didn't. Sometimes you want to make sure you, your kid is the direct reflection of your child support payment. But more importantly, that could mean a lot of things. You right. Know? Right. Like, you know, it's 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 tough. It's it's, tough. it's a big picture, and you know what? And 
you're you're only one part of it and you can't control every aspect of it. You know, I could say in terms of the, the court, if you want to stay out of the family court's uh, way, then you fulfill their obligation and then you dig deeper into your pocket and your heart and then you go above and beyond, right? Yeah. Now, now, uh, you ever see any father uh, get custody of their kids? Sure, sure. Not, I mean, I'm saying sure like it happens every day, right? Dang, but, yeah. but no, you did say that. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'll say, unfortunately, not. Um, I do see great dads um, who do get custody of the kids, and that tends to be because they have a mom who isn't, you know, too old and able to, she's able-bodied enough to help take care of the kids. She's willing to come to the court. Uh, The mom takes the, takes the child's mother to court uh, because there's grandparents' rights, right? You know, grandparents can take uh, their child or their child's uh, significant other to court to express their rights. And I've seen it only happen typically when the guy has a rally of people around them really supporting them. And really showing like, wow. And it makes a great impression to the court. Like, wow, he has this whole team of people here that has his back. Because it's interesting. Moms, moms for by and large, need to work. The economy is tough. This isn't back in the days sure. where, you know, one person can work, the other person can stay home. Typically, two people have to work. Separated uh, families have to work, right? Um, it's interesting how I've seen and heard the family court say to a dad who's trying to fight for custody, they try to say, well, how are you going to take care of the kid when you're at work? How does she take care of the kids when you're at work? <laughs> that kills me. That kills me. Yeah. And then I say, what is the what is the right answer? Because you can't say that. You you have a smart mouth sure, in front of the judge sure, and court. Sure, Forget yeah. it. You might as well not even came here. Yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah. So that's always you're funny. You're in contempt of court. Yeah, yeah. That's always funny to me, you know. But um, to go back to it, uh, what I also have seen— uh, this happened recently. A stipulation. Stipulation is an agreement between two parties. Real simple. You know, you know, hate to hit, uh, hit people with weird definitions, but a stipulation is an agreement between two parties. I've seen uh, dads as recent as a month or two ago, a stipulation that I drafted where the dad decided the mom works, but he covers everything mm. in that house. This dad is not rich. This dad has three jobs. And he covers everything because he believes in that philosophy of, I don't want anything to change for the kids. Their standard of living is going to be top notch. Everyone goes to private school. I think he even supports the mother's student loan. So, wait, different, so, different. So, so what is, what is, um, okay, let's give an example. Right. Uh, marriage, man and woman. Yeah. Um, they have two kids. Go for it. Um, they get divorced. They were married 10 years. Right. Um, he's got to pay child support. Uh, does that. he owe her money also? If the wife, procedurally speaking, if the wife, uh, if the, or the husband, wait, they lived in a house. Keep in mind, go for they it. lived in a house, right? Right. What are you saying? To he's me? moving out, right? Or he may have moved out already, right? You know, what is he? If she can't afford to to probably pay the mortgage, if she was staying home or had like a, a little odd job here and there. Mm-hmm. Say they weren't a two, and you know this happens a lot too. Go for where it. Where the, the maybe the man is the breadwinner, right? What is he? What is he uh, rely? What, what is he liable for? Does he have to keep that roof over her head? Does he get divorced and pay child support, and now this girl has to figure out get an apartment or something? Well, you see, and that's it. I can describe scenarios. Speaking to a scenario like that, what I've seen is there's one of two. There's one of two ways I can answer that. One, the way you're drawing is as if someone else, the black robe again, has to make that decision for them, right? They they assess both of their finances, you know, and they determine, you know, what should happen to the home. Now, what I've seen, I've seen some dads, the either the breadwinner or they make the lion's share of the combined income, right? Um, I've seen some dads be compelled or prompted or prodded by the court to go ahead and pay a significant amount of the household expenses. Even not living there no more. Yeah. And for how long? Forever? It's up to the court. They have certain um, calculations at the... But the court would also... I've seen judges dictate to the other spouse, you know, that you need to get your act together. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not just going to sit at home. This this isn't the money. same anymore. Okay. You know. And what about how many years is like a stipulation that they had to be together where she's allowed to get this? Well, if there's kids involved, it tends to be until the kids are of college age where they're independent. So, yeah. so, but meaning like marriage years. Say if they were married two years, it doesn't matter, or, no. or they got to get past the. Are there kids involved? Because, 
Yes, because the reason why I say that for is because they're uh, – I've heard over the years, I don't know, and that's why I'm so glad you're on here. What's that? Uh, explaining, I, I heard that uh, when you marry someone, and if, so let's say you're successful, you have introduced them to a lifestyle that's right. that they're used to living. That's right. And somewhat, you can't just now tell them to go back and revert themselves. Right. You're not going back. If you came out the project, you're not going back to the project, no. for example. If you yeah. came out the hood, you're not going back to the hood. You know, the the court, by and large, will not impact the children like that. Or, in, in many cases, the woman. But typically, if there are kids involved, then that tends to be the case. You're absolutely right. What I've also seen, um, is, which is my preference, which is the couple makes the decision themselves. You see how I like to go back to that, where I like to think of people being independent and people like making their own choices and empowering themselves? Because, you, you know, you're saving time, you're saving headache, and you're saving money. Mm. you know, in the long run. Mm. So why put yourself through that, mm. you know? But again, what gets in the way? Emotion. Mm. Emotion. Both sides. Hey, listen, we live in a day and age uh, where people are celebrating their divorce Yep. Uh, more than they celebrated their marriage. Right. But anyway, listen, let's go to a quick break. We're sitting here with my guy, Sandler Francois, premier... Paralegal. Paralegal is the company founder of... Uh, that that handles a lot of things that we were speaking about: child support, prenups, divorce. Uh, listen, internet. This is one of those episodes where you're going to learn shit shit that you may not want to know, but you have to have it in your pocket if you ever need it. There you go. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Get that prenup, Brody. Cheer. <laughs> What's up, Internet? This is Ed Woods. You're tuned in to the Premium Peak Show. Internet, and we're back sitting here with my man, Sandler. Yes, Francois. sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something, man. Um, Spin some real truth, man, and, and, and really giving people uh, an inside look at what goes on in the uh, courts, yes. through the families, yes. uh, through divorce. You yes. know, m- Marriages usually lasted 20, 30, 40, 50 years. You know, my mother, this November, my mother and father celebrating 50 years of marriage. God bless. Me and you got a lot in common. My mm. parents just celebrated 50 years last week. Mm. Will we ever see that anymore? Uh, you married? Uh, no. Okay. Perhaps, there's a chance for you. You got, you got all the makings of a great husband, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. But sometimes, you know, it's... Yeah, I, I mean, so look. Um, what? Tell me. This, what? No, 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 no. It's, it's. I don't know, man. You know, I do want to say that uh, getting divorced um, early age right. left a bit of taste in my mouth. Can I ask how old you were? Uh, maybe like uh, if you want, 24. All right. How long were you married? Well, like two years. Two years is We were bad. together like two, three years before that. Though. The new national average. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Between between two and five years, based based on what I've seen and what what uh, what I've read, I'm just talking about locally. You know. Yeah, you know my, my you know you know it's uh, the only thing that uh, upsets me is that um, I think, and this happens unfortunately. Um, when you've been through like a divorce, you kind of say like, "I ain't getting married again." It's almost like when you've been through a relationship. Uh, that may have been not so great. You kind of think everyone is going to be like that, right? Where you like say if someone say if someone cheated on you. I mean, I've had girls tell me like, my last boyfriend cheated. I'm like, are you going to do that? And I'm like, why would I do? Why would you say it? like? Why would I do that? Or, but it's because of what they've been through and what they see. You know what I mean? It's like 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 a guy hurts a girl. It's harder for her to trust the next guy. But that next guy may be a good guy. But so now it boils down. Great point. But now it boils down to something important, right? Um, choices. The only thing you own is your decision. Now you're either going to choose to invest in that person while they heal themselves. You can only contribute to their healing. You can't be their healer, right? Or you're going to be the victim of their pain because they refuse to engage in whatever they need to to be on the right path. I will backtrack though. Um, I do stand and believe I will be one of those. Uh, what fifty years is the is the what like ten uh, silver? Silver is it silver or is it it's gold? Gold. No, gold. Silver's twenty five. Yeah, silver's twenty five. Gold is and gold isn't that messed up? Like yeah, marriage right? is so disintegrated. We don't even know anymore. <laughs> you know, I, I know like the first year is paper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, something like that. I will be one of the fifties. I will be one of the fifty year olds. Um, I told my wife, give me until I'm ninety, and then let me go to sleep. <laughs> but I think we touched on it, and without going too uh, far into it. What do you think the reason is for shorter marriages these days? 
uh, poor decision making. They weren't exposed to what a solid relationship is, where the um, where they they haven't seen enough peaks and valleys. You know, they've seen the illusion of what a peak looks like, like great times, fast, you know, uh, good sex, you know, fun times. Um, but they haven't seen the valleys and seen people come out of the valleys and rise to another peak. You know, um, on paper, do you believe marriage is worth it? The reason why I say that for is because uh, the cost of divorce seems, you know, high, you know. And... Yeah, the emotional cost and the financial cost. Yeah. Uh, do I think so? I'll say this. Well, uh, before you answer that. Go ahead. If you're happy. Right. If you're in love. Right. If you're... Am I crazy? And I'm not saying this. I'm just giving it hypothetically. Is it worth it to get married? Like, what? Like, you, you love each other. Everything's going great. Like, you know, is it, like, less of, you know? And I've had that, too, over the years. Hmm. Without, I don't want you to lose your thought. No, no. Good. But I had it over the years where you introduce and, you know, you have a kid. And, like, uh, how do I introduce you? Like, oh, this is my baby daddy or this is my kid's father. Like, what's so wrong with being, like, my partner? Like Life partner. Yeah, right. I mean, do we have to think people look at us less because we're not married? I'll say this. Uh, is marriage still worth it? That was your question, yeah. right? Yeah. I'll say, if you're asking me from a spiritual or religious standpoint, some people would say yes. You know, because some people do believe they shouldn't get married unless, I mean, they, they believe they cannot engage in that intimate type of relationship unless they meet certain spiritual religious obligations. You know, some people uh, say no. But if you ask me what I think, I think if you're really in it for the long haul and um, somebody made a joke. Um, you, I don't know if you remember Redhead Kingpin mm. back in the days, mm. you know, throwback. People mm. Google Redhead Kingpin. Uh, he had a, his one of his biggest songs is we don't have a plan B. Mm. You know, it's plan A or nothing. Mm. I think that's what it really has to be. You know, uh, is there a certain state that someone should avoid get married in? Like, in other words, uh, which state can screw you the most if you get a divorce? I can tell you mostly based on my exposure, my experience, you know, 10 years in is primarily in New York. Um, I can tell you what I know about uh, New Jersey, which tends to be a bit stringent, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to separation of assets, you know, or equitable distribution. You know, equitable is supposed to mean like a shared or a fair distribution. doesn't really exist. Um, I'll say on the opposite side, California, California tends to offer a lot of flexibility when it comes to getting divorced. Par uh, there, there are certain uh, what you will call divorce services, paralegal services, of which I here in New York am one of the uh, leading providers of where you don't typically need an attorney, where they allow people to get divorced at a low cost and it's a bit looser. But when it comes to getting screwed, when it comes to getting screwed, I think overall, based on my knowledge, across the 50 states, you know, it could be really difficult. But I wouldn't be able to say because it's not my expertise across the 50 states. I could just tell you about New York being as difficult as it is. You know, uh, is, is, is a legal separation, you think it's like worth the time? You know, um, because some people just separate. There's so many people that are still married that are just not together no more. And they say, like, yeah, yeah, we were divorced, but they're really still married. Pete, you know, that's interesting because when you say legal separation on one hand, I'm thinking you're referring to a written document where we're legally separated. All the, the all the uh, the limits and all the the uh, the laws that attach us as husband and wife or wife and wife as partners, you know, in this day and age. Um, with a written contract, we're still married, but we don't have those certain responsibilities. So now I can file my taxes, you know, a certain way without running uh, a file, Uncle Sam. But w the way you ended that question implied I just moved out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so that, um, when it boils down to it, it's weird to me personally because I'm like, not to sound like a divorce cheerleader, but why not, you know, at that point? Especially when there's now... You've been apart, and you've been apart, and both of you have new relationships. Well, it, it, I guess I, I mean I've seen people uh, like that before, where it's like they they're like eight years in, they never got divorced, and they haven't been together or lived together in eight years. I'm like, what's the deal then? Um, I don't know. I guess who knows? I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what that. I'm is. saying work it out, but I have seen people engage in legal separations. Um, prepare simply prepare a simple contract, actual legal separation, right? Because um, one person decided to go to school, and because the partner's income was so high, this one can't get child, um, not child support, uh, student loans. Yeah. You know, so if you show, if you show a college or financial aid department that you're legally separated, you're, you know, you can be entitled to a certain amount of student loans.
In some cases, you think it's uh, cheaper to keep him or keep her, you know? If you're talking from a fiscal aspect, I say yes under all circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but some people are like, fuck it, man. I'm not, you know, I guess, you know, it, it is sad because I think that um, divorce, in my opinion, is uh, is Jenga. And mm. little by little, you pull, pull out, out a piece pieces. and pull out a piece and, and pull out know, a piece. That tower is shaking, until, man. Until somebody's like, oh, I had enough. And you see, and that tower is that emotional tower, right? Because mm. what you went ahead and did was um, you saved you you saved yourself a lot of money, especially if now you're retired now and everybody's older, the kids are grown, that kids are aged out. There's no child support coming to play. Who cares what happens with the house? Because just just us two now. Um, whereas now, but you realize a lot of times you're miserable or you're depressed. You know, where perhaps, like I said earlier, you could have met the person that you were truly meant to be with. You know. Um when when we take a look at divorce, we take a look at uh, child support. Yeah. Um, let's say a father. Yeah. Or a mother. Um. They they won't let them see you know their kids. Uh, the mother won't let the father see their kids. Uh, That's why. And mm-hmm. uh, vice versa. What should a person do? That's what family court's for. Yeah. That's what I've seen over and over again. I'll say that's one of the strongest. Uh, purposes or reasons why a person should entertain the court system is because now the emotions have gotten so off the charts, right? Where this person's restricting and not only restricting the other parent, typically they will say the, the mom's keeping away from the dad, you know, let's say dad's keeping away from the mom too, right? Or the mom's keeping away from the grandparents. You don't, you realize the impact you're having on the child. Don't you realize the blueprint Mm. that you're shaping for that kid? That's something that a lot of people, I'm a father of four. And one thing that's very important to me is to understand the blueprint. Your children are always watching, Mm -hmm. even when you're not in the room. They feel vibes, the vibrations. I'm big on energy, right? You know, you could have argued with your child's mother or father in the other room, you know, uh, late at night, thinking the kid's asleep. But when you walk out of the room or the next morning when you're making breakfast, you're still holding on to that tension. The kid feels it. Or when they see or hear you know, you're talking about the other parent. They feel it. So now you're causing them to own a bunch of negative energy that they can't even decipher, man. You know, so it's always weird to me when you restrict the child. It's okay if you don't like me. It's okay if you don't like me involved with somebody else in a, in a new life. But can we really, really take a deep breath and just at least be civil? We don't have to shake hands. You know, I always tell people I try to help the most people I can. I have a lot of friends that have gotten divorced over the years. Right. I try to give them advice. Right. I try to let them know uh, what worked for me, what didn't work. Right. I know in the beginning, it's tough. When you get divorced, it's tough. But if you can see past her and make sure that it's for your kid, mm-hmm. it will get better. Always. Um, it will. It will. Um, and, you know, anything in the beginning is tough. And, you know, you're just feeling it out and you're about moving on from your life. Right. But the kid should never, ever get sacrificed. You know, I'll never forget one time, and I and I mentioned this a couple of times, and anybody new listening or didn't hear me say it before. I remember when I just was getting divorced, and she called me, uh, my ex-wife, and she was like, Hey, um, can you pick up your daughter? It was like a Tuesday night. She said, Can you pick up your daughter? I'm going on a date tonight. I need you to pick her up. And I was like, mm. Wait. You want to go out and get, and this is my exact words. I said, you want to go out and get fucked? And you want me to watch our kid? Very honest. I'm not, I'm not, no, hell no. And I hung up. In about one minute, I realized, like, what the fuck am I doing? I get an extra moment to spend with my kid. I said, I said hello? I said, yeah, listen, I don't care whatever you do. I, I, I want to, I'll pick her up. I'll come, no problem. You went, you went from thinking about yourself to thinking about the big picture. Because no matter what happens in divorce, right, in child support, right, in these fucked up situations, the kid, the kid pays. That's who pays, and that's permanent. Because mm. then, again, like we just agreed to, the kid has to un- unravel that self within him or her. Sure. You know, and at the end of the day, the money was always temporary. Don't we already know we're not taking the money with us, right? Mm. You know, so but money, money best used is invested. You know, money best used sure. is invested. Can can someone refuse a divorce? 
Like stop the process. Of course, st- really? Stop the process. Procedurally speaking, yes. Refuse a divorce overall means stop it permanently. Absolutely not. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, um, there's two ways. There's two ways a divorce can go down. Three ways. Uh, if you're going to stay out of court and you don't want to turn into TV, then there's two ways an uncontested divorce can happen. Either your spouse is going to sign an affidavit defendant, a waiver saying, I agree, whatever, whatever, whatever terms, or I agree and just, just let everybody go their separate way. Or what tends to happen, I'll say about 30 to 40 percent of the time out of three or four out of every 10 divorces that I've been exposed to is the spouse can get served. You know, because if you walk into the county clerk's office and you say, I want to get divorced, but my spouse won't sign, a county clerk will just tell you, not even legal advice. They'll say, as long as you can prove that you made them aware that the process was taking place, in other words, having them served, not by yourself, but by an adult over the age of 18, and in New York, they haven't served more than five times. Um, Or you can get a licensed process server, or sometimes the sheriff, the marshal, the police, whatever, hopefully you don't have to get the police involved, um, can serve the individual. The divorce will go through by what's called default. In mm-hmm. other words, no response is a response. I served you. You didn't do anything about it. So guess what? No response is a response. The court will say, oh, okay, so-and-so had the other person served. The person didn't respond? Okay, I'll put it through. Now, if you want to slow down a divorce, something I've seen happen is once you get served, I've seen people file what's called a notice of appearance. It's one sheet of paper can stop a process that could have just cost you a couple hundred. Now it can potentially cost you thousands Mm. because they put the brakes on the process. And they're basically saying, I'm contesting, which means ultimately you're going to end up in front of a judge. Mm. Mm. Now, the divorce will go through anyway, down the road. Mm. But something that could have been, what, 12 to 16 weeks? Yeah. Is it cheaper now to get divorced than it was years ago? It sure is. It sure is. Because as I was saying before, like in California, but in New York, um, and I'm proud to say Premier Paralegal specializes in this, is the uh, uncontested divorce process. Um, I have something I call the one-shot divorce, whereas um, in two appointments, um, a person can get more than 50% of the divorce done. In one appointment, you can get the entire divorce done if your spouse cooperates. You know, so and that can be something whereas the average legal fees in New York City uh, used to be three to five thousand dollars for the same divorce. But on top of that, what would happen is then you would have to pay filing fees and then you'd have to go retrieve your own judgment. And there was a whole lot of homework that would come with that after the fact. Now, what can happen is the court will even provide you with forms yourself. If you're willing to put in the work and do the homework, they'll give you a, a set of forms as thick as a dictionary. It's like motor vehicles. There you go. And if you're willing to carve through it, you could perhaps get the divorce done, you know, without having to pay anyone like me or a contested attorney. You know, one thing I like about uh, your journey, Sandler, is, uh, you know, we're speaking off air um, about where you said that, uh, you you know, you were living in a project uh, not that long ago, like what, like... Uh, 12 years ago. 12 years ago. 12. And you had told your son, or not your son, your daughter. My daughter. You know, tell us that story. Well, what happened was this. Uh, 12 years ago, uh, living in Farragut Houses, you know, mm-hmm. shout out to Farragut Houses. Sure. You know, um, you know, I still have family there, uh, tons of friends there, and it's not too far from my office in Dumbo. Uh, 12 years ago, when I decided to branch out on my own, I used to work for a big law firm on Lexington Avenue, uh, branched out on my own, and I only had enough money to print up flyers. I literally had probably about 50 to 60 bucks to spare to go to what was called fin- Kinko's, which is FedEx now, yeah. to print up anywhere from 150 to 200 flyers. And my daughter came along with me to put up these flyers all throughout Brooklyn, specifically around the area where I live now, Nostrin and uh, Fulton, uh, you know, in Bed-Stuy. So what would happen is this. She grew. She saw the process, you know, in terms of being an entrepreneur. Sure. She saw me build She's seen daddy sitting at his desk, you know, typing or writing and falling asleep, you know, very much the same way I saw my father when he was looking for his associate's degree, an immigrant, you know, from Haiti, you know, barely knew English. And he strived and pushed. And I would see my dad or Poppy, you know, go to sleep while he was studying. My daughter, you know, years later saw me, you know, going to sleep while I was working, trying to build a business that was not only being built, but it was feeding them. So years later. Um, As the business grew, she got to see the better side of life and, um, you know, a bit more comfortable. But she's the most humble uh, because she's been exposed to what it was like. She remembers the pissy stairways. She remembers, you know, seeing dad's friends who were downstairs doing hand to hand movements, you know, one hand to the other. And she's evolved. Well, now she works for me. Yeah, nice, you know, nice. My, my daughter, she does the court runs. That's how it know. should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm big on legacy. You know, whereas my other three kids, they don't have... 
a clue. You know, their life has been a bit more cushioned. You know, uh, they their struggles are different. You know, whereas uh, my daughter has seen it from the beginning. True. You know, so that that's something I'm incredibly grateful for. We ain't for. never going back. Yeah, we ain't never going back. As as we look through the window, um, we live near Housing Project and, and Bed Stuy, and I use that to say we're never better. You know, and mm. we're definitely not less than anyone sure. we're around because we came from the same place. But I do point at the, out the window symbolically, and I said we're not going back. I refuse. What? What do we say? We don't have a plan B. No, we don't have a plan yeah. B. Hey, listen, anybody uh, who's listening to this who, uh, you know, is uh, struggling with their marriage, struggling with the fact, or even just married and thinking like, hey, I know we don't prepare, but should I? You know, mm. should I ever, you know, because that's what we started this episode off by saying, like, right. That you should be informed about divorce. That you should be no. You should know about that shit. But think about it. If you ever actually wanted to do that, you would say to yourself, uh, "You're preparing yourself for failure, maybe." No. Or are you preparing yourself to be educated? You know, what do you, what, what do you say to uh, uh, you know people who are struggling with their marriage at home? I, I say first things first. Make a decision for yourself. You can't make the decision for your spouse. You know, I can't say I've been married for 22 years and I haven't had my own valleys, right? And I've had to, at times, pursue marriage counseling, you know, and that's something I would encourage everyone to do. And if your spouse doesn't want to roll with you to marriage counseling, go by yourself. You may realize the challenge is more in you than in both of you together, you know. Um, sure, you got to make you better first. Right, right, because you're not going to change them. No. You're not going to change them. Uh, second, I would say try to go alone with your spouse or encourage them to go alone themselves. Sure. If you go one, then you go the next week, you know. Unfortunately, uh, after, uh, the, um, you know, going through marriage counseling doesn't work, I feel like that's always the end. Uh, like, well. I always feel that way. I feel like when you both go and then no, nobody wants to go anymore, it's usually like the last straw. It tends to be symbolic of, of being the end. I've seen things change. Let me tell you, you know what I do? Um, and this this might be against business protocol. That I do give refunds in my office. And you know to who? To people who decide to reconcile. Really? I've had people in the middle of the process, they give a call. Or one, one thing I'm big on is customer service, the customer service aspect, sure, right? Sure. Which you would think is a little different from this particular field, like sure. customer service. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. yeah. But, like, uh, hi, thank you for calling. You yeah. going to get divorced today? <laughs> you know? Exactly, right? But well, We're glad but, to help you. you know, let's get this shit going. Yeah, let's keep it rolling. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, but at the end of the day, in all seriousness, we audit our files and we say, where's so-and-so been? You know, we haven't heard from we haven't heard from Pete yeah. in a while. You know, what's going on? And it's not about Pete has a balance that he owes us, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's going on? We'll check in with you. And we've had people say, well, so-and-so and I are trying to work it out. And what will become the case is they'll end up saying, you know what? We want to reverse the process. There is some uh, documents you have to fill out that you have to sign for the court to say we want to kill the divorce. Yeah, sure, you sure. know, you can actually leave it alone, too. But, you know, but you can kill divorce with a written document more more professionally. But I've always given refunds for people who decide to reconcile, yeah. you know. That's the, listen, that's, the, 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 that's, look, okay, that just shows what type of person you are. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, lo I love the journey you're on. Um, more importantly, I love the information that you're putting out there. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me online at premierparalegal.com. Mm -hmm. uh, premierparalegal.com. Should I spell it? No, uh, no that's good. Okay. Um, well, P R E M I E R. Paralegal.com. Yeah. Or if you want to learn more about our one shot divorce, the, the quickest, fastest, most professional, high quality divorce in all of New York State, you can go to one shot divorce.com. One shot divorce. What about uh, you do the Instagram thing? Yep. I love PP Legal okay. uh, on Instagram and Facebook is Premier Paralegal. You fuck with Twitter? I did, but you know, Twitter. You know, I, I'm still coming around to it. You know, I, listen, I love Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Why, you know, you know what? I love it because it's just you shoot it out there, let it live, man. You Ma maybe I there, will. I, I was on, then off, on and off. I, I love the gram, um, Facebook because I can, th and I'm on YouTube. Yeah, at yeah. Premier Paralegal, I get to run my mouth. The do way it for the I gram. Do, do it for the gram. Uh, my last question to you, as we wind this episode down, would be: uh, Out of all the fields, why divorce? Why? this field at the end of the day what it boils down to is helping people get their life back mm. i think uh we're all on an individual journey where people have made mistakes you know uh, i don't think people have necessarily made a mistake in their marriage that leads to a divorce 
more so than they've made a mistake in their individual evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it boils down to it, perhaps some mistakes you've made in your own personal development made you connect yourself to the wrong type of person or the person that's not fitting you. You know, they won't bring out the best in you and you can't bring out the best in them. So I love I love to play a role in helping people get their life mm -hmm. back. I like that, man. I like you're a good dude, man. You're a Thank good you. dude. Internet, Internet, Internet. Let me tell you something. Uh, if uh, you're home right now and uh, you and the lady ain't getting, to, you know, listen. Try to fucking work it out. There you go. Okay. Try to love each other. There try to go. care about each other. But if it can't work out, okay, yeah, head on over to premierparalegal.com. dot com. Yeah, or one shot divorce dot com. And I'll, figure I'll it the fuck out because let me tell you something, man. You know, I will say this, and I mean this, no, not joking. Um, Sometimes shit doesn't work. And it's sometimes, I, I know we joke, we say where it's cheaper to keep her, but your sanity and having your kids grow up in a toxic relationship is not good. Um, you can co-parent and do a beautiful job. Just make sure you have peace of mind. And at the same time, make sure you're not exposing your kids to all that bullshit. Love each other or not. That's it. Internet's Sandler Francois. Thank Keep you. it up, brother. Thank See you, you next friend. episode. Peace. Internet's, if you enjoyed that episode, I want you to email me at thepremiumpeachshow at gmail.com. Again, that email is thepremiumpeachshow at gmail.com. Let me know what you thought. And listen, all my advertisers out there, all my big businesses, my small businesses, whoever, a friend, a store, you want to advertise on the Premium Peach Show? Email me at the premium peach show at gmail.com and let's get working okay make sure you subscribe rate leave a comment on all streaming platforms or podcasts tell a friend to tell a friend and we'll see you next episode cheer <laughs>